And joining me now is Republican Senator Lamar Alexander of Tennessee. Senator Alexander, welcome back. Thank you, Chuck. So one of the reasons you gave uh, in your release about not voting for more witnesses is that, and, and to decide that, okay, this trial is over, let's let the people decide, um, was that it was, the election was too close. So let me ask you, though, on the witness vote itself, would it be helpful for the people to decide if they had more information? Well, I mean, if you have eight witnesses who say someone left the scene of an accident, why do you need nine? I mean, it's, the question for me was, do I need more evidence to conclude that the president did what he did? And I concluded, no. So I voted. What do you believe he did? What, one, do you, what do you believe he did? What I believe he did, one, was that he called the president of Ukraine and asked him to become involved in investigating Joe Biden, who was... A, you believe his wrongdoing began there, not yeah, before? But, but not he, before? I don't know about that, but he admitted that. The mm -hmm. president admitted that. He okay. released a transcript, he said, on television. The second thing was, at least in part, he delayed the military and other assistance to Ukraine in order to encourage that investigation. Those are the two things he did. I think he shouldn't have done it. I think it was wrong. Um, inappropriate was the way I'd say improper, crossing the line. And then the only question left is, who decides what to do about that? Well, who decides what to do about that? The people. That? The people is, is, is my conclusion. It's, you know, it struck me really for the first time early last week that we're not just being asked to remove the president from, from office. We're saying, tell him he can't run in the 2020 election, which begins Monday in Iowa. If this weren't an election year, would you have had a different, uh, would you have looked at this differently? I would have looked at it differently, probably come to the same conclusion because I don't think what he did, I think what he did is a long way from treason, bribery, high crimes and misdemeanors. I don't think it's the kind of, of inappropriate action mm -hmm. that the framers would expect the Senate to substitute its judgment for the people in picking a president. Does it wear on you, though, that one of the... I mean, one of the foundational reasons, uh, ways that the framers wrote the Constitution was almost fear of foreign interference. That's true. So, and here it is. Well, if you hooked up with Ukraine to wage war on the United States, as the first senator from Tennessee did, you could be expelled. But this wasn't that. This, this was the kind of, what the president should have done was, if he was upset about Joe Biden and his son and what they were doing in Ukraine, he should have called the attorney general and told him that, and let the attorney general handle it the way they always handle cases that involve public figures. And why do you think he didn't do that? Maybe he didn't know to do it. I, okay. I, <laughs> this has been a rationale that I've heard from a lot of Republicans. Well, boy, he's still new to this. Well, a lot of people come to At Washington. what point, though, is he no longer new to this? Well, the, the bottom line is not an excuse. He shouldn't have done it. Uh, and, and, and I said he shouldn't have done it. And now I think it's up to the American people to say, okay, good economy, lower taxes, conservative judges, behavior that I might not like, call to Ukraine, weigh that against Elizabeth Warren or Bernie Sanders and pick a president. Are you at all concerned, though, when you seek foreign interference, he does not believe he's done anything wrong, that what has happened here might encourage him that he can continue to do this? I don't think so. I hope not. I mean, enduring an impeachment is something that nobody should like. Even the president said he didn't want that on his resume. I don't blame him. So if a call like that gets you an impeachment, I would think you would think twice before he did it again. What, it is, what, what example in, in the life of Donald Trump has he been chastened? Hmm. I haven't studied his life that close, but he, he, he like most people who survived to make it to the president's presidency he's sure of himself but hopefully he'll look at this and say okay that was a mistake I shouldn't have done that shouldn't have done it that way and he'll focus on the strengths of his administration which are considerable uh, abuse of power define it well that's the problem with abuse of power as professor Dershowitz said during his argument he had a list of 40 presidents who'd been accused of abuse of power from Washington to Obama so it's too too vague a standard to use uh, to impeach a president, and the founders didn't use it. I mean, they said, I mean, think of, think of what a high bar they set. They said treason, bribery, 
high crimes or misdemeanors. And then they said... What do you think two, they meant by misdemeanors? Violation well, of a public at, trust, no? At, at the time they used it, misdemeanor meant a different thing in Great Britain. But I think it probably, I think Dershowitz was right. It was something akin to treason, bribery, and other high crimes and misdemeanors. Very high. And then in addition to that, two-thirds of us in the Senate have to agree to that, which is very hard to do, which is why we've never removed a president this way in 230 years. One of your other reasonings was the partisan nature of the impeachment yeah. vote itself in the House. Except now we are answering a partisan impeachment vote in the House with a partisan, um, I guess, uh, I don't know what we call this right now. Well, it's you not call yet. it acquittal. Uh, That's uh, what happened. If, if, if an acquittal, but essentially also on how the trial was run, a partisan way from the trial. So if we make partisan, bipartisanship a standard, if somebody has, has a stranglehold on a base of a political party, then what you're saying is you can overcome any impeachable offense as long as, well, you, have, as, long as you have this stranglehold on a group of people. Well, as far as, as, far as what the Senate did, I thought, our, I thought we gave a good hearing to the case. I mean, I helped make sure that we didn't dismiss it. We heard it. There were some who wanted to dismiss it. Mm -hmm. I helped make sure that we had a right to ask for more evidence if we needed it, which we thought we didn't. Mm -hmm. We heard, we saw videotapes of 192 times that witnesses testified. We sat there for 11 and 12 hour days for nine days. So I think we heard the case pretty well. But the partisan point's the most important point to me. James Madison, others, mm -hmm. thought there never, ever should be a wholly partisan impeachment. And if you look at Nixon, when the vote to authorize that inquiry was 410 mm -hmm. to 4, and you look at Trump, where not a single Republican voted for it, if you start out with a partisan impeachment, you're almost destined to have a partisan acquittal. All right, but what do you do if you have somebody who has the ability to essentially be a populist, you know, be mm -hmm. somebody who has who is able to say it's fake news, it's deep state, don't trust this, don't trust that, the establishment is doing this, and so don't worry about truth anymore. Don't worry about what you hear over there. I mean, it, I, I'm, some may say I'm painting an accurate picture, some may be saying yeah. I'm painting a, a, a radical picture, but how do you prevent that? Well, the, the way you prevent that in our system, according to the Declaration of Independence, is we can serve, we, we, we elect duly, we, we have duly elected presidents, with the consent of the governed. So we mm -hmm. vote him out of office. The other thing we do is, as in the Nixon case, Nixon had just been elected big in 1972, big, mm -hmm. only lost only one state, I think. But then a consensus developed, a bipartisan consensus that what he was doing was wrong. And then when they found the crimes, he only had 10 or 12 votes that would have kept him in the Senate, so he quit. So that's what, those are the two options you have. Have we essentially eliminated impeachment as a tool for a first-term president? No, I don't think so. I think what we've... Impeachment as a tool should be rarely used, and it's never been used in 230 years to remove a president. There have been 63 impeachments, right. eight convictions. They're all federal judges on a lower standard. Uh, does it bother you that the president's lead lawyer, Pat Cipollone, is now fingered as being in the room with John Bolton the first time the president asked John Bolton to call the new president of Ukraine, and have him take a meeting with Rudy Giuliani. And I say that because Pat Cipollone is up there arguing that there's no direct evidence, and yet he may have been a first-hand witness. Well, it doesn't have anything to do with my decision, mm -hmm. because my decision was, did the president do it, what he's charged with? He wasn't charged with a crime. He was mm -hmm. charged with two things. And my conclusion was he did do that, and I don't need any more evidence to prove it. That doesn't have anything to do with where Mr. Cipollone was. No, I say that. Does it, does it only reinforce what some believe is that this, the White House was disingenuous about this the whole time? They've been disingenuous how they've handled um, subpoenas from the House or requests from the well, House? Well, no, I don't I mean, agree. Does that, I don't, does that at I don't all agree. weigh in? I don't you? agree with that, Chuck, either. I mean, the fact of the matter is, in the, in the Nixon case, the House voted 410 to 4 to authorize an inqu inquiry. That means that it authorized subpoenas by the Judiciary Committee for impeachment. This House never did that. And so the, all the subpoenas that they asked for were not properly authorized. That's the reason that the president didn't respond to them. Bill Clinton offered regret for his behavior. Mm -hmm. This president has not. Um, does that bother you? Well, there hasn't been a vote yet either. So we'll see what he says and does. I think, uh, 
I think that's up to him. Uh, I think you're comfortable acquitting him before he says something of regret. Would that not would that not help make your acquittal vote more comfortable? I wasn't asked to decide to assess his level of regret. I was asked, mm -hmm. did he did he make a phone call and did he at least in part hold up aid in order to influence an investigation of Joe Biden? I concluded yes. So I don't need to assess his level of regret. What I hope he would do mm -hmm. is when he makes his State of the Union address that he puts this completely behind him, never mentions it, and talks about what he thinks he's done for the country and where we're headed. He's got a pretty good story to tell if he'll focus on it. You're one of the few people that detailed what you believe he did wrong. You have one of the few Republicans that have accepted the facts mm -hmm. um, as they were presented. Um, Mitt Romney was just uninvited from CPAC. Mike Pompeo can't speak freely in talking about Marie Ivanovich, the, uh, the ousted ambassador. Is there room for dissent in the Republican Party right now? Well, I, I believe there is. I mean, I dissent when I need to, whether it's on the president. It's not team. easy, though, right now, is it? Well, I voted in a way that not everybody appreciated on immigration just before I was reelected. I voted to, um, against the president's decision to use what I thought was unauthorized money to build a wall, even though I think we need the wall. I said I thought he did it mm -hmm. uh, this past week and will vote to acquit him. So I'm very comfortable saying what I believe, and I think others can as well. You know, in that phone call, there's one thing on the phone call that I'm surprised, frankly, hasn't been brought up more by others. This, the mere mention of the word CrowdStrike is a Russian intelligence sort of piece of propaganda that they've been circulating. Mm -hmm. Does it bother you that the President of the United States is reiterating Russian propaganda? Yes. I, I, I think that's a mistake. I mean, if, 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 you, if you see what's happening in the Baltic states where, where Russians have a big warehouse in, 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 uh, in, in, in St. Petersburg, in Russia, uh, where they're devoted to destabilizing Western democracies. I mean, for example, in one of the Baltic states, they accused a NATO officer of raping a local girl. Of course, it didn't happen, but it threw the government into right. complete disarray for a week. So I think we need to be sensitive to the fact that the Russians are out to do no good to destabilize Western democracies, including us, and be very wary of theories that Russians come up with and peddle. Well, I was just going to say, this... Is it not alarming? The President of the United States, in this phone call, and you, you clearly are judging him on the phone call, You more so than, than well, much of his other behavior. Well, the phone call and the evidence. There was plenty of evidence. I mean, the, 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 the House managers came to us and said, we have overwhelming right. evidence. We have a mountain of evidence. And you agree. And we approve it beyond a shadow of a doubt, which made me think, well, then why do you need more evidence? What do you think it's more helpful for the public to hear from John Bolton? They'll read his book in two weeks. You don't want to see him testify? Well, if the question is, do I need more evidence to right. think the president did it, the answer is no. I guess I'm coming back to this issue of if, if, if you looked at it as an isolated incident, here he is using Russian propaganda in order to try to um, talk to, this pre to, the, to the new president of Ukraine. Uh, that's alarming. If, well, if, 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 where is he getting this crowd strike propaganda? My view is that 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 is Russian propaganda. Maybe he has information that I didn't have. Um, are you definitely voting to acquit, or do you think you may vote present no, on no, this I'm question? No, I'm going to vote to acquit. I'd, I'd, I, I'm very concerned about any action that we could take that would establish a perpetual impeachment in the House of Representatives whenever the House was a different party than the president. That would immobilize the Senate. You know, we have to take those articles, stop what we're doing, sit in our chairs for 11 hours a day for three or four weeks and consider it. And it would immobilize the presidency. So I don't want a situation, and the framers didn't either, where a, where a partisan majority in the House of either party can stop the government. You uh, used the phrase, pour gasoline on a fire. Yeah. It certainly struck home with me reading you saying something that I've been thinking long and hard about. How concerned are you about the democracy as it stands right now? Well, I'm concerned, and I want to give credit to Marco Rubio because that's really his phrase. I borrowed it from him, pouring gasoline on the cultural fires. He went I, a step I, further. He said this was an impeachable offense, but he yeah. was uncomfortable in an election yeah. year. I mean, this... But, but I, I'm concerned about the divisions in the country. They're reflected in the Senate. They make it harder to get a result. I mean, I work pretty hard to get results on health care, make it easier to go to college, 
Uh, and we've had some real success with that. But the Senate is for the purpose of solving big problems that the country will accept. And that goes back to what happened this past week. The country would not have accepted the Senate saying to it, you can't vote for or against President Trump in the Iowa caucus, New Hampshire primary of the election this year. You glad you're leaving? No, I I've, I've really love being in the Senate, but it's time for me to go on, think, turn the page, think of something else to do. I've retired... You That'll be my third, I permanent, just say third I, permanent retirement You've retired a few times. I have. <laughs> oh, is this one going to stick? Well, we'll see. We'll Senator see. Lamar Alexander, Republican from Tennessee, your always thoughtful guest. Thanks for coming on. And Thank you, your Chuck. Hello from Washington. I'm Chuck Todd, and thanks for checking out the Meet the Press channel on YouTube. Click on the button down here to subscribe and click over here to watch the latest interviews, highlights, and other digital exclusives.